This is number 3.4a. We're in Algebra 1, and we're going to talk about expressions and equations in this video, and the phrases to algebraic expressions. So, if you remember, equations have an equal sign, and expressions don't, okay? That's how you can tell them apart. Expressions just have terms in them, a bunch of variables and coefficients and stuff, okay? We're going to talk about the phrases to algebraic expressions, and we've done some easier ones like the words and, total, and sum mean to add, less or fewer means to subtract, times means to multiply, and when you see half, a third, a fourth, or the words into, we know it means to divide, okay? So, we've learned to turn those simple phrases like 3 less than 10 as into an equation like 10 minus 3, right? So now we're going to turn more difficult phrases into equations and expressions. If you see twice the number n, it just means 2n. It means 2 times n. If you see half the number n, it means half times n. It could also mean n divided by 2, couldn't it? That's the number that would be half of it, right, if you divided it by 2. Now look at all of these. They all mean the same thing. 5 less than x means x minus 5. x is 5 greater than means x minus 5. 5 subtracted from x means x minus 5. And 5 removed from x means x minus 5. So there might be several different ways of saying the exact same expression, okay? If you see 5 less than 6 times x, we now put a 6 as a coefficient in front of that x minus 5. See? Half the sum of a number and 4 would be x plus 2 divided, I'm sorry, x plus 4 divided by 2. It could also be half the number and 4, couldn't it? We could multiply the number plus 4 by a half. So either way, this way or this way, it could be half of it, all right? So remember to check the links for links in the video description that'll help you. I have uh, an entire playlist that is all algebraic word problems, and it talks about the clue words, and there's not that many videos in there, but it'll teach you everything you'd want to know about word problems, okay, and how to write the equations, and everything is in there, all right? So, to write as an algebraic expression, four times the quantity, three less than a number, this can be split into two parts. We look at it as 4 times the quantity, and then you pause. Then you say 3 less than a number, and that helps your brain see that there's a difference. There's two parts here. We have 4 times the quantity, and then we have 3 less than a number. The 3 less than a number is the x minus 3, and 4 times that quantity would be 4 on the outside of the parentheses, wouldn't it? That would be a distributive property uh, expression. All right, let's look at this one. Now we've got half the sum of a number and 4. Well, half the sum of the number and 4 could be a half on the outside of parentheses and the number plus 4, so we multiply them, or we could do the number plus 4 and divide it by 2, like this, and get half of it, right? Either way, all right? What if it said 8 less than the product of 3 and a number? Well, product tells us there's multiplication. And if it's 8 less than that, there's going to be some subtraction, isn't there? We can split this into two parts, 8 less than the product and 3 and a number. And that means, because of product, that means it's 3 times a number. So we have 3n minus 8. See? What if we have 3 less than twice a number? Well, here's the 3 less minus 3, and twice the number would be 2n, so we have 2n minus 3. See? Let's try another one. What if it says half the difference of a sum and 1? Well, same thing. We could either multiply a half by the sum, take away 1. That's the difference. Difference means subtraction. Or we could do that sum minus 1 divided by 2 to get half, couldn't we? Either way, it would we'd get the right answer if we did that equation. What about 5 times the quantity 3 greater than a number? Well, 3 greater than a number would be that number plus 3, wouldn't it? And 5 times that would be 5 times that number plus 3. 
if it says 3 fewer than 10 times a number plus 5, now it can be split into 3 parts. Now we've got 3 fewer than, so that's going to be subtracting 3. 10 times a number would be 10n, and the plus 5 would be the plus 5. So we'd have 10n plus 5 minus 3. See? We could combine like terms here and make it just a plus 2, couldn't we? What if it said, Emma bought two apples more than half the apples that Lisa bought? Well, first, look at this as split into two parts. There's two apples more than half of Lisa's. So half of Lisa's apples plus two would get us the amount that we're looking for. So let's say Lisa had 10 apples. So half of that 10 would be five, wouldn't it? What would be two more than that five? Seven, see? So if you're confused, try plugging numbers in. When you see half the apples that Lisa bought, Give Lisa a nice round even number that can be split in half easily, like 10 or 20 or 100. And then, you know, come up with a variable like A for apples and try saying two more and see if that works, okay? So sometimes when you're trying to write the expression, it really helps to plug in some real numbers to take the place. If you can't figure out five times the quantity three greater than a number, Come up with a quantity three greater than a number. The quantity three greater than 10 would be 13, wouldn't it? And then five times, that would be five times 13. And then that'll help you write the, the expression, okay? All right, we're gonna move on now and we are going to actually solve some word problems and write some expressions for them that fit with variables that are appropriate, okay? That'll be in 3.4b. I'll see you there. Keep trying. Bye.